Welcome to Slothful Slumber, the podcast where we transform the vast knowledge of the internet into a gentle lullaby for your mind. I'm your host, Luna Dreamwell, and I'm here to guide you on a journey to tranquility through the soothing cadence of Wikipedia articles. Each episode, we'll delve into the most wonderfully mundane and sleep-inducing topics, helping you drift off into a realm of serene dreams. So find your comfortable space, close your eyes, and let the dull hum of information carry you into a restful slumber. Now, let's embark on tonight's voyage of tranquil learning as we explore a topic so peacefully uneventful it just might whisk you away to the land of dreams. This Wikipedia article is titled Lake Superior. Lake Superior is the largest freshwater lake in the world by surface area and the third largest by volume, holding 10% of the world's surface freshwater. Located in central North America, it is the northernmost and westernmost of the Great Lakes of North America, straddling the Canada-United States border with the Canadian province of Ontario to the north and east and the U.S. states of Minnesota to the west and Michigan and Wisconsin to the south. It drains into Lake Huron via St. Mary's River, then through the lower Great Lakes to the St. Lawrence River and ultimately the Atlantic Ocean. Name. The Ojibwe name for the lake is Gichigami or Kichigami in different dialects, meaning Great Sea. Henry Wadsworth Longfellow wrote this name as Gichigumi in the poem The Song of Hiawatha, as did Gordon Lightfoot in his song The Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald. According to other sources, the full Ojibwe name is Ojibwe Gichigami, Ojibwe's Great Sea, or Anishinaabe Gichigami, Anishinaabe's Great Sea. The 1878 dictionary by Father Frederick Baraga the first one written for the Ojibwe language, gives the Ojibwe name as Ochipwe Kichigami, a transliteration of Ojibwe Gichigami. In the 17th century, the first French explorers approached the Great Inland Sea by way of the Ottawa River and Lake Huron. They referred to their discovery as Le Lac Supérieur, the upper lake, that is, above Lake Huron. Some 17th century Jesuit missionaries referred to it as Lac Tracy for Alexandre de Prouville de Tracy. After taking control of the region from the French in the 1760s, following their defeat in the French and Indian War, the British anglicized the lake's name to Superior. On account of its being superior in magnitude, to any of the lakes on that vast continent. Hydrography Lake Superior empties into Lake Huron via the St. Mary's River and the Sioux Locks, Salt St. Marie Locks. Lake Superior is the largest freshwater lake in the world in area and the third largest in volume behind Lake Baikal in Siberia and Lake Tanganyika in East Africa. The Caspian Sea, while larger than Lake Superior in both surface area and volume, is brackish. Lake Superior has a surface area of 31,700 square miles, 82,103 square kilometers, which is approximately the size of South Carolina or Austria. It has a maximum length of 350 statute miles. 560 kilometers, 300 nautical miles, and maximum breadth of 160 statute miles, 257 kilometers, 139 nautical miles. Its average depth is 80.5 fathoms, 483 feet, 147 meters, 
with a maximum depth of 222.17 fathoms, 1,333 feet, 406 meters. Lake Superior contains 2,900 cubic miles, 12,100 cubic kilometers of water. There is enough water in Lake Superior to cover the entire land mass of North and South America to a depth of 30 centimeters, 12 inches. The shoreline of the lake stretches 2,726 miles, 4,387 kilometers, including islands. The lake boasts a very small ratio, 1.55, of catchment area to surface area, which indicates minimal terrestrial influence. American limnologist J. Val Klump was the first person to reach the lowest depth of Lake Superior on July 30, 1985, as part of a scientific expedition, which at 122 fathoms one foot, 733 feet or 223 meters. Below sea level is the second lowest spot in the continental interior of the United States and the third lowest spot in the interior of the North American continent after Great Slave Lake in the Northwest Territories of Canada, 1,503 feet 8 meters below sea level, and Iliamna Lake in Alaska, 942 feet 247 meters below sea level. Though Crater Lake is the deepest lake in the United States and deeper than Lake Superior, Crater Lake's elevation is higher, and consequently its deepest point is 4,229 feet, 1,289 meters, above sea level. While the temperature of the surface of Lake Superior varies seasonally, the temperature below 110 fathoms, 660 feet, 200 meters, is an almost constant 39 degrees Fahrenheit, 4 degrees Celsius. This variation in temperature makes the lake seasonally stratified. Twice per year, however, the water column reaches a uniform temperature of 39 degrees Fahrenheit, 4 degrees Celsius, from top to bottom, and the lake waters thoroughly mix. This feature makes the lake demictic. Because of its volume, Lake Superior has a retention time of 191 years. Annual storms on Lake Superior regularly feature wave heights of over 20 feet, 6 meters. Waves well over 30 feet, 9 meters, have been recorded. Tributaries. Lake Superior is fed by more than 200 rivers, including the Nipigon River, the St. Louis River, the Pigeon River, the Pick River, the White River, the Mishipicoten River, the Bois Brule River, and the Kamenistikia River. The lake's outlet at St. Mary's River has a relatively steep gradient with rapids. The Sioux locks enable ships to bypass the rapids and to overcome the 25-foot, 8 meters, height difference between Lake Superior and Huron. Water Levels The lake's average surface elevation is 600 feet, 183 meters, above sea level. Until approximately 1887, the natural hydraulic conveyance through the St. Mary's River Rapids determined the outflow from Lake Superior. By 1921, development in support of transportation and hydroelectric power resulted in gates, locks, power canals, and other control structures completely spanning St. Mary's Rapids. The regulating structure is known as the Compensating Works and is operated according to a regulation plan known as Plan 1977A. Water levels, including diversions of water from the Hudson Bay watershed, are regulated by the International Lake Superior Board of Control, 
which was established in 1914 by the International Joint Commission. Lake Superior's water level was at a new record low in September 2007, slightly less than the previous record low in 1926. Water levels recovered within a few days. Historic high water. The lake's water level fluctuates from month to month, with the highest lake levels in October and November. The normal high water mark is 1.17 feet, 0.36 meters, above the datum, 601.1 feet, or 183.2 meters. In the summer of 1985, Lake Superior reached its highest recorded level at 2.33 feet, 0.71 meters, above the datum. 2019 and 2020 set new high water records in nearly every month. Historic low water. The lake's lowest levels occur in March and April. The normal low water mark is 0.33 feet, 0.10 meters, below the datum. In the winter of 1926, Lake Superior reached its lowest recorded level at 1.58 feet, 0.48 meters, below the datum. Additionally, the entire first half of the year, January to June, included record low months. The low water was a continuation of the dropping lake levels from the previous year, 1925, which set low water records for October through December. During the nine-month period of October 1925 to June 1926, water levels ranged from 1.58 feet, 0.48 meters, to 0.33 feet, 0.10 meters, below chart datum. In the summer of 2007, monthly historic lows were set. August at 0.66 feet, 0.20 meters, and September at 0.58 feet, 0.18 meters. Climate change. According to a study by professors at the University of Minnesota Duluth, Lake Superior may have warmed faster than its surrounding area. Summer surface temperatures in the lake appeared to have increased by about 4.5 degrees Fahrenheit, 2.5 degrees Celsius between 1979 and 2007, compared with an approximately 2.7 degrees Fahrenheit, 1.5 degrees Celsius, increase in the surrounding average air temperature. The increase in the lake's surface temperature may be related to the decreasing ice cover. Less winter ice cover allows more solar radiation to penetrate and warm the water. If trends continue, Lake Superior, which freezes over completely once every 20 years, could routinely be ice-free by 2040, although more current data through 2021 does not support this trend. Warmer temperatures could lead to more snow in the lake, affect snow belts along the shores of the lake, especially in the upper peninsula of Michigan. Two recent consecutive winters, 2013 and 2014, as well as 2014 and 2015, brought high ice coverage to the Great Lakes, and on March 6, 2014, overall ice coverage peaked at 92.5%, the second highest in recorded history. Lake Superior's ice coverage further beat 2014's record in 2019, reaching 95% coverage. Geography. The largest island in Lake Superior is Isle Royale in Michigan. Isle Royale contains several lakes, some of which also contain islands. Other well-known islands include Madeline Island in Wisconsin, Michipicoten Island in Ontario, and Grand Island, the location of the Grand Island National Recreation Area in Michigan. 
The larger cities on Lake Superior include the twin ports of Duluth, Minnesota, and Superior, Wisconsin, Thunder Bay, Ontario, Marquette, Michigan, and the twin cities of Salt St. Marie, Michigan, and Salt St. Marie, Ontario. Duluth Superior, at the western end of Lake Superior, is the most inland point on the St. Lawrence Seaway and the most inland port in the world. Among the scenic places on the lake are Apostle Islands National Lakeshore, Brockway Mountain Drive on the Keweenaw Peninsula, Isle Royale National Park, Porcupine Mountains Wilderness State Park, Pocasqua National Park, Lake Superior Provincial Park, Grand Island National Recreation Area, Sleeping Giant, Ontario, and Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore. The Great Lakes Circle Tour is a designated scenic road system connecting all of the Great Lakes and the St. Lawrence River. Climate. Lake Superior's size reduces the severity of the seasons of its humid continental climate, more typically seen in locations like Nova Scotia. The water surface's slow reaction to temperature changes seasonally ranging between 32 and 55 degrees Fahrenheit, 0 to 13 degrees Celsius, around 1970, helps to moderate surrounding air temperatures in the summer, cooler with frequent sea breeze formations, and winter, and creates lake effect snow in colder months. The hills and mountains that border the lake hold moisture and fog, particularly in the fall. Geology. The rocks of Lake Superior's northern shore date back to the early history of the Earth. During the Precambrian, between 4.5 billion and 540 million years ago, magma, forcing its way to the surface, created the intrusive granites of the Canadian Shield. These ancient granites can be seen on the North Shore today. It was during the Penachean orogeny, part of the process that created the Great Lakes tectonic zone, that many valuable metals were deposited. The region surrounding the lake has proved to be rich in minerals, with copper, iron, silver, gold, and nickel the most frequently mined. Notable production includes gold from the Hemlo Mine near Marathon, copper from the Kuina Peninsula and the Mama Ince Point Formation, iron from the Gogobic Range, silver at Silver Islet, and uranium at the Ano Point. The mountains steadily eroded, depositing layers of sediments that compacted and became limestone, dolomite, taconite, and the shale at Kakabeka Falls. The continental crust was later riven, creating one of the deepest rifts in the world. The lake lies in this long extinct Mesoproterozoic Rift Valley, the Mid-Continent Rift. Magma was injected between layers of sedimentary rock, forming diabase sills. This hard diabase protects the layers of sedimentary rock below, forming the flat-topped mesas in the Thunder Bay area. Amethyst formed in some of the cavities created by the Mid-Continent Rift, and there are several amethyst mines in the Thunder Bay area. Lava erupted from the rift and formed the black basalt rock of Mishipicoten Island, Black Bay Peninsula, and St. Ignace Island. In the most recent geological history, during the Wisconsin glaciation 10,000 years ago, ice covered the region at a thickness of 1.25 miles, 2 kilometers. The land contours familiar today were carved by the advance and retreat of the ice sheet. The retreat left gravel, sand, clay, and boulder deposits. Glacial meltwaters gathered in the Superior Basin creating Lake Minong, a precursor to Lake Superior. Without the immense weight of the ice, the land rebounded, 
and a drainage outlet formed at Sault Ste. Marie, becoming today's St. Mary's River. History The first people came to the Lake Superior region 10,000 years ago, after the retreat of the glaciers in the last glacial period. They are known as the Plano, and they used stone-tipped spears to hunt caribou on the northwestern side of Lake Minong. The Shield Archaic peoples arrived around 5000 BC. Evidence of this culture can be found at the eastern and western ends of the Canadian shore. They used bows and arrows, paddled dugout canoes, fished, hunted, mined copper for tools and weapons, and established trading networks. They are believed to be the direct ancestors of the Ojibwe and Cree. The people of the Laurel Complex circa 500 BC to AD 500, developed sin net fishing, evidence being found at rivers around Superior, such as the Pick and Mishipicoten. The people of the Terminal Woodland period were evident in the area from AD 900 to 1650. They were Algonquian peoples who hunted, fished, and gathered berries. They used snowshoes, birch bark canoes, and conical or domed lodges. At the mouth of the Mishipicoten River, nine layers of encampments have been discovered. Most of the Pukasqua pits were likely made during this time. The Anishinaabe people, an ethnic grouping including the Ojibwe Chippewa, have inhabited the Lake Superior region for over 500 years and were preceded by the Dakota, Meskwaki, Fox, Menominee, Nipigon, Noke, and Grovantres. After the arrival of Europeans, the Anishinaabe made themselves middlemen between the French fur traders and other native peoples. They soon became the dominant Native American nation in the region. They forced out the Sioux and Fox and won a victory against the Iroquois west of Sault Ste. Marie in 1662. By the mid 18th century, the Ojibwe occupied all of Lake Superior's shores. In the 18th century, as the booming fur trade supplied Europe with beaver hats, the Hudson's Bay Company had a virtual monopoly in the region until 1783, when the rival Northwest Company was formed. The Northwest Company built forts on Lake Superior at Grand Portage, Fort William, Nipigon, the Pick River, the Mishipicotten River, and Salt St. Marie. But by 1821, with competition harming the profits of both, the companies merged under the Hudson's Bay Company name. Many towns around the lake are current or former mining areas, or engaged in processing or shipping. Today, tourism is another significant industry. The sparsely populated Lake Superior country, with its rugged shorelines and wilderness, attracts vacationers and adventurers. Shipping Lake Superior has been an important link in the Great Lakes waterway, providing a route for the transportation of iron ore as well as grain and other mined and manufactured materials. Large cargo vessels called lake freighters as well as smaller ocean-going freighters, transport these commodities across Lake Superior. Shipping was slow to arrive at Lake Superior in the 19th century. The first steamboat to run on the lake was the Independence in 1847, whereas the first steamers on the other Great Lakes began sailing in 1816. Ice closes the lake shipping from mid-January to late March. Exact dates for the shipping season vary each year, depending on weather conditions that form and break the ice. Shipwrecks The southern shore of Lake Superior between Grand Marais, Michigan, and Whitefish Point is known as the Graveyard of the Great Lakes. More ships have been lost around the Whitefish Point area than any other part of Lake Superior.
These shipwrecks are now protected by the Whitefish Point Underwater Preserve. Storms that claimed multiple ships include the Matafa Storm in November 1905 and the Great Lakes Storm of 1913. Wreckage of SS Cyprus, a 420-foot, 130 meters, ore carrier that sank on October 11, 1907, during a Lake Superior storm in 77 fathoms, 460 feet, or 140 meters, of water, was located in August 2007. Built in Lorraine, Ohio, Cyprus was launched August 17, 1907, and was lost on her second voyage, hauling iron ore from Superior, Wisconsin, to Buffalo, New York, with the sole survivor among her 23 crew being Charles G. Pitts. In 1918, the last warships to sink in the Great Lakes, French minesweepers Inkerman and Sarasoles, vanished in a Lake Superior storm, perhaps upon striking the uncharted danger of the Superior Shoal in an otherwise deep part of the lake. With 78 crew members dead, their sinking marked the largest loss of life on Lake Superior to date. SS Edmund Fitzgerald was the latest ship to sink in Lake Superior, 15 nautical miles, 28 kilometers, 17 miles, from Whitefish Point in a storm on November 10, 1975. The wreck was immortalized by Gordon Lightfoot in his ballad, The Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald. All 29 crew members died, and no bodies were recovered. Edmund Fitzgerald was battered so intensely by Lake Superior that the 729-foot, 222 meters, ship split in half. Her two pieces lie approximately 170 feet, 52 meters, apart at a depth of 88 fathoms. 530 feet, or 160 meters. Lightfoot sings that, Superior, they said, never gives up her dead. This is because of the unusually cold water, under 36 degrees Fahrenheit, 2 degrees Celsius, on average around 1970. Normally, bacteria decaying a sunken body will bloat it with gas, causing it to float to the surface after a few days. But Lake Superior's water is cold enough year-round to inhibit bacterial growth, and bodies tend to sink and never resurface. Joe McInnes reported that in July 1994, explorer Frederick Shannon's Expedition 94 to the wreck of Edmund Fitzgerald discovered a man's body near the port side of her pilot house not far from the open door, fully clothed, wearing an orange life jacket, and lying face down in the sediment. Ecology. More than 80 species of fish have been found in Lake Superior. Species native to the lake include banded killifish, bloater, brook trout, burbot, cisco, lake sturgeon, lake trout, lake whitefish, long-nosed sucker, muscalunja, northern pike, pumpkin seed, rock bass, round whitefish, smallmouth bass, walleye, white sucker, and yellow perch. In addition, many fish species have been either intentionally or accidentally introduced to Lake Superior. Atlantic salmon, brown trout, carp, chinook salmon, coho salmon, freshwater drum, pink salmon, rainbow smelt, rainbow trout, round goby, ruffe, sea lamprey, and white perch. Lake Superior has fewer dissolved nutrients relative to its water volume than the other Great Lakes, and so is less productive in terms of fish populations and is an oligotrophic lake. This is a result of the underdeveloped soils found in its relatively small watershed. It is also a reflection of relatively small human population and small amount of agriculture in its watershed. 
However, nitrate concentrations in the lake have been continuously rising for more than a century. They are still much lower than levels considered dangerous to human health. But this steady, long-term rise is an unusual record of environmental nitrogen buildup. It may relate to anthropogenic alternations to the regional nitrogen cycle, but researchers are still unsure of the causes of this change to the lake's ecology. As for other Great Lakes fish, populations have also been affected by the accidental or intentional introduction of foreign species, such as the sea lamprey and Eurasian ruff. Accidental introductions have occurred in part by the removal of natural barriers to navigation between the Great Lakes. Overfishing has also been a factor in the decline of fish populations,